tinkering, of his setting up a process of invention and a play. View from below is a very is a very light and translucent. Oh, you, you, you like the the orientation aspect. Well, it's, it's, it's just an emotional aesthetic reaction. Yeah. Sorry, how many seats is that here? I think that's a really nice solution. Benveria, Gallic for Beautiful Mountain. That was the name he had given it. The hills and lakes reminded Alexander Graham Bell of his native Scotland. He was already famous. He had invented the telephone and was one of the foremost scientists of his day. Bell came to Bedeck, a small community in Nova Scotia, to escape the heat of Washington, the expectant eyes of the world, and build, as he said, a little cabin by a running brook. Like many things to do with Bell, a small notion led to something grander. Every summer for almost 40 years, the family joined him at Benveria, his wife Mabel, their two daughters and grandchildren. Mabel ran the household and played a major role in Bedeck life. She encouraged and supported Bell's extended family of colleagues, engineers, the young minds of his generation. At their peak, the Benveria workshops employed more than 50 people. There were achievements. In 1909, the Silver Dart airplane made the first powered flight in Canada. In 1919, the HD4 hydrofoil set a world speed record held for almost a decade. It was to be Bell's last great achievement. Bell died in 1922. He's buried with his beloved Mabel on their beautiful mountain. The Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site opened in 1956 and quickly achieved prominence. It houses the world's largest collection of his work. Here are displayed the earliest telephones. The graphophone, a critical step in the development of the modern phonograph. The photophone, a direct link to the fiber optics of today, as well as artifacts from the flight and hydrofoil experiments at Bedeck. The site celebrates Bell's commitment to better communication and understanding. Scientific inquiry, humane technology, and caring for others. Here, the public learns of Bell's childhood, of his lifelong interest in sound and speech, and his work with deaf people. Today, more than 200,000 people a year enjoy the site as interest in Bell continues to grow. Bell's legacy remains central to Bedeck. The community enjoys the site and benefits from its position as a cornerstone of the Cape Breton tourist industry. But success brings new needs and opportunities. On some days, it seems there's barely room to turn around. Access for the disabled has become increasingly difficult. In the site's cramped storage facilities lies an unseen treasure trove that could support additional displays. Looking to the future, the Canadian Park Service has launched an ambitious project to expand and improve the present facility. Architects and planners meet in the long process of creation. The goal is to establish a place which reflects Bell's interests and ingenuity. The, the setting is absolutely exquisite. It's on the side of a beautiful hill overlooking uh, Lake Bredore, uh, where the hydrofoil flew over the waters, where the airplane uh, took off on the ice overlooking the uh, estate across the lake. And what we want is the new building to have that indoor-outdoor relationship. The artifact reflected in the site, a relationship to the site where the uh, experiments took place. There were those in Bedeck who thought him odd, fooling away the live long day. They may also have noticed the kites were getting bigger. Bell believed that aircraft built like box kites would be safer than those of fixed-wing design. 
But he didn't work alone. New ideas were in the air. Bell's personality, his intelligence, and his imagination attracted McCurdy and Baldwin and Glenn Curtis. And he inspired them to form the associations and the companies which became the cornerstones of the industry in both the U.S. and in Canada. The deck was the birthplace of Canadian aviation. In 1907, Bell and his wife Mabel set up the Aerial Experiment Association. Canadians and Americans joined together to fly. It was called the Silver Dart. It took off from the frozen lake at the deck and made the first powered flight in Canada. In one year, the association flew four aircraft. They were the first in North America to use ailerons and tricycle landing gear. And when their work was completed, the Canadian Aerodrome Company was formed. This was Canada's first aviation company, and it built the first aeroplane in the country. A full-scale replica of the Silver Dart will be the striking centerpiece in the new Hall of Flight. Creating a marvelous backdrop, a 65-foot window frames Bedeck Bay and the Bell Estate. A spacious new reception hall opens onto an expanded sales area and state-of-the-art theater. As a building gets bigger, as it gets more complex, as the exhibitions become more complex, there's a greater imperative on the design that the movement system be as simple and as clear as it can possibly be. We need clarity of movement, simplicity of movement. We need clarity for orientation for all visitors. For the general visitors, we need it. Most especially, uh, we'll need it for the disabled visitor. It becomes evident a ramp system is to be the principal orientation for the site. The top of the ramp is also a mezzanine, which overlooks the hydrofoil exhibit. As the ramp descends between the two main levels, it connects with a series of platforms. These provide a panoramic overview of the major exhibit areas. We worked hand in glove with the uh, Canadian Park Service. We brought into the uh, design office uh, specialists and experts from uh, uh, far and wide, New York, Chicago, Montreal, Toronto, brought everyone together into our uh, design sessions from that collaborative process. We've ended up with a design that uh, we think is a very exciting design and one that really reflects both the functional requirements and the spirit of the man. The new multi-million dollar building will present a memorable landmark as a center for the worldwide commemoration of Alexander Graham Bell. Bell loved an inquiring mind. He had a passion for discovery and sharing knowledge. The new site will allow everyone to experience the excitement of discovery by presenting the latest in interactive exhibits and demonstrations. In science centers and museums on the frontiers of communication, exhibits like these encourage learning through enjoyment. For students of Bell's work, a computerized database of the entire collection will be available. An electronic networking system could allow direct communication with other institutions throughout the world. Through the use of innovative new techniques, Bell's work will also be made available to a group of people for whom he had an enduring commitment. This museum has been a model. Something that other museums around the world can copy. Something that would fall. What technology can do to make things accessible to the people. Alexander Graham Bell was born into a family where speech was a very important matter. His father was a world-renowned teacher of speech, and he himself became interested in speech at an early age. He studied speech intensively and also became interested in hearing because his mother was herself hard of hearing. A.G. Bell had very little to work with. Initially, he could only use vision and touch. Children had to see what they could of speech through watching the lips and feel what they could of speech by touching the chest or the face. Bell's work was limited in many respects with hearing impaired children because 
there was no reliable means of measuring hearing. He invented the first audiometer. It was the beginning of the measurement of hearing that would later allow for the development of hearing aids, cochlear implants, tactile devices. These now can aid us in doing more with the speech of hearing impaired children than Bell himself even dreamed of in his days, and Bell was a dreamer. I jumped off the high In recognition of Bell's work, the Canadian Park Service is committed to making the new National Historic Site a showpiece of accessibility. Today, great strides are being made to integrate disabled persons with the mainstream of society. Just as Bell had opened up the world through the invention of the telephone, new advances in technology are empowering those with disabilities as never before. Technology is again inviting them into the culture rather than locking them out. So I think any way that you could have that type of interactive setup in a museum would be, would, would announce very loudly to deaf people, loudly in quotes, uh, that this place is for you and you are, we intend you to be welcome here. So it would be nice. The Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site will work with the disabled community and those in the forefront of developing technical aids to make the dream of full integration a reality. I'm sure that if Bell were around today, he'd love the idea of what you're doing. He'd be so interested in finding new things, showing people what could be done. Bell spent a lifetime determined to enrich the human condition, no matter what the barriers. Once again, people are working under his inspiration. The Canadian Park Service invites those who hold a special place for this remarkable man to join them in Bedeck, Nova Scotia, to create a spectacular and lasting commemoration of Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs>